fleet operators have a choice between two different braking systems, conventional drum brake systems and air disc brake systems. When it comes to brake fade, the differences between the two are obvious. Brake fade can be defined as the reduction in braking force during repeated or sustained braking applications. This most commonly occurs during steep downhill descents or in applications requiring frequent stops. Drivers immediately recognize brake fade when more and more brake input is required to achieve the same stopping force. First, let's look at what can be referred to as mechanical brake fade. This is simply brake fade due to the mechanical properties of drum versus disc systems. So how do drum brakes react during sustained braking applications? As a driver repeatedly uses the brakes, the brake system components begin to heat up. The friction between the brake shoe linings and the drum begins to significantly increase the temperature of the drum itself. As the drum temperature increases, it actually begins to expand, physically moving the inner brake surface of the drum further away from the brake shoe linings. The driver begins to experience brake fade and is required to add more and more force to the brake pedal. Further, the actual physical limit of the brake chamber push rod is reached. All of this typically occurs when the brake system reaches around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. If we look at a graph of what happens, we can see how the temperature increases as the driver applies more and more braking force over time. Once the 300 degree threshold is hit, the brake drum has expanded and brake fade begins to occur almost immediately, dropping the force being applied to the brakes. Every experienced driver knows this moment and there is virtually nothing they can do it's simply going to take a longer distance to stop. Now let's compare that with what happens in a disc brake system. Again, as the driver repeatedly uses the brakes, the brake system components begin to heat up. The friction between the brake pads and the rotor begins to significantly increase the temperature of the rotor. As the rotor temperature increases, it begins to expand, just as the drum does. The difference is, this time the braking surface of the rotor has physically moved closer to the brake pads. As the driver goes to apply the brakes, absolutely no brake fade will occur. If we look at our graph now, we can see how the temperature increases as the driver applies more and more braking force over time. Once the 300 degree threshold is hit, the brake rotor has expanded and the braking force actually begins to increase. With disc brake systems, brake fade is simply not an issue and will not impact stopping power. So far, what we've looked at can be referred to as mechanical brake fade, which were brake fade characteristics due to the mechanical properties of drum versus disc systems. There is another type of brake fade known as frictional brake fade. This involves what occurs between the actual frictional surfaces where the braking occurs. On a drum brake, it occurs where the brake shoe lining surface contacts the drum surface, and on a disc brake, it occurs where the brake pad surface contacts the rotor surface. The vast majority of drum brake pads are manufactured with a friction material that is held together with resin. Issues arise, however, when the brake lining reaches temperatures above 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Once that temperature threshold is reached, the resin in the brake pads actually begins to break down and glaze over, essentially causing the frictional surface of the brake pad to lose its friction properties. If we look at a graph depicting this, as the resin-based pads hit 600 degrees, their frictional properties begin to fall off dramatically. When that happens, it leads to more pronounced brake fade in the drum brake system. Nearly all disc brake pads, however, are manufactured with a mixture of metallic and ceramic friction material. The advantage of metal or ceramic material in disc brake pads is that it creates frictional properties that don't begin to decline until the system reaches approximately 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, if we look at a graph depicting this, as the metal-based pad goes past 600 degrees, its frictional properties are unchanged. It is not until around 1500 degrees that we begin to see a fall off in braking performance. So to recap, the drum brake system experiences mechanical brake fade at 300 degrees Fahrenheit and further experiences frictional brake fade at 600 degrees. The disc brake system didn't experience mechanical brake fade at all and only begins to experience frictional brake fade at 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. Which system would you rely on for your fleet operations?